Hi folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining. Today we're going to go a little bit farther into uh, silicone mold making. I've had tremendous response from a few of you uh, wanting to know a little bit more. And one in particular was uh, Kusiko. He asked about being able to make a portable version in a disposable bowl. And I got to thinking, um, in the previous video, you saw me make the cornstarch and silicone in a uh, Teflon bag, zip it up, and that way we were able to mix it up without making a mess. Well, today we're going to do the same thing with the portable version. We're going to use the naphtha and we're going to use the silicone and we're going to mix everything up in the bag. We're going to cut the corner and squeeze it out the same as like a pastry chef would. However, we're going to do something with it because I'm moving forward and making my bioplastics and one of the people interested in our company wants me to make this. This is uh, a grow pot for growing plants, uh, vegetables, flowers, what have you, uh, filled with dirt. And it's made out of plastic and when you throw this away, it stays in the landfill forever. One of the goals of my company is to replace plastics with bioplastics so that when they go into the landfill, they decompose into healthy components for the earth. So that's where we're going to go. I'm actually going to do this and I'm going to make a mold of this. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, let's get started. We're going to make a pourable version of silicone and what you see here is everything laid out as to what I'm going to need to do this okay so we have the silicone uh, once again you want to look on the back and you want to see the words acetic acid and make sure that it says acetic acid is evolved in curing the printing is hard to see and I am looking However, you want to look for the words acetic acid is evolved in curing. You want to make sure that it's 100% silicone. I like to use the white. It's easier to, for me to, uh, to work with. And I use the naphtha. You can use other things, okay? You can use mineral spirits, uh, white gas, uh, turpentine, mineral turpentine. Now, the reason I choose naphtha is simply because it is slightly cheaper than the mineral spirits. Okay, I have a one cup uh, measuring cup. That is simply a reference for when I start squeezing this into the bag. I am not going to put this in there. And I am going to start with one quarter cup naphtha for two cups of silicone. I have the knife to cut it. I have a uh, something to pierce the foil shell inside. I have the screwdriver for opening the can. I have the scissors for cutting the bag and of course I have the caulk gun here. So let's get started. Load your caulk gun. Cut it back. <laughs> Pretty far. You don't need all of that extra. This makes it easier to uh, get it out. Two little pokes with a sharp knife to pierce the foil shell. I recommend that you don't squeeze the silicone into the corner. It just makes it easier for you if you simply aim for the center of the bag near the bottom and squeeze out a quantity that you think will fill your mold. For me, I think two cups is fine. Please excuse the noise of the caulk guy. It's, it's getting cold in here. Okay, it looks like the whole tube 
uh, was about two cups. So, as you can see, perhaps not even that. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of uh, top you have for yours, but these are safety caps where you have to turn and then pop off the top. Okay. For this, uh, this is a, a by eye sort of thing. I'm beginning with one quarter cup. I have experimented with this a good bit, and for the consistency that I want, a quarter cup is sounds right so far. Now we're going to seal this up, and we're going to begin mixing. And again, the consistency is up to you. Okay, now, as you can see what I'm doing here, it's going to take about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of mixing for the uh, nap to, to completely thin out the silicone. And you want to work it if you don't uh, get it all in. You're going to have uh, thick lumps of the thicker silicone in your mold. And that's not the goal here. So we're just going to work it. And I'm going to pause the video now. And I'm going to work it for about 15 minutes until I get it to the consistency that I want for pouring my mold. I always like to include a segment about uh, anything that I'm doing that requires a, uh, a bit of understanding as far as dangers. So therefore, I'm going to do a quick blurb on how to use naphtha safely. This is uh, flammable stuff, okay? It's very flammable stuff. And the vapors can cause fire. What that means is if you make a mass and you wipe it up with a paper towel, this paper towel becomes very flammable, even more flammable than what is inside the can. The reason is vapors volatilize off of something like a wiping cloth or a paper towel much more easily and quickly than it does even out of the spout of the can. Therefore, if you wipe up your mess, soak down your paper towel, your wiping cloth with water before you throw it away, uh, it would be best just to even leave it completely air dry outside until it's just safe to throw it away. Alrighty folks, so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be making a two-part mold for this. Now if you plan on making two-part molds, um, you will need to add uh, registration and uh, points for your molds. For my purposes, it's not that particularly important. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to be using something. This is a plastic shopping bag. This remains in the landfill for 200 years thereabouts and the last time I looked 12 billion of these are going into the landfill every day so my goal of making one use bioplastics um, is very important to me one of the things I want to replace is this so what I have here is um, the reason I'm reusing this bag is because I've made a little bit of extra and for my purposes what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze it out into this and any excess that will just spill out onto this bag. Now what I'm making today is the inside of this mold. Now I'm not going to fill the whole thing with pourable silicone. Uh, that would be a waste. So I am going to fill up some of the dead space with uh, just a plunger. Now I have a registration mark for me which is good enough um, so that I have a uniform thickness on my mold on the sides and on the bottom. I have mixed this for a good 15 minutes. It is to the consistency that I like for pouring such a mold. I'm going to snip the corner now and we're going to pour it out. Okay, so now, um, Mike, you're going to enjoy this because uh, I am not using my wife's salad bowl for this. 
everything is in a bag. Let's see if we can get this thing pour in here on camera well enough that you can see it. Uh, folks that know me know that I, I love getting my head in front of the camera while I'm working. And it's, it's very nice consistency as you can see. Okay, and I'm going to be using just about all of this, it looks like, for this particular mold. It's flowing very nicely. As you can see, uh, it is spreading out very nicely on the sides. I have attempted to make the same two-part mold using the cornstarch and the silicone, and because it dries so fast, I simply was never able to make a good quality mold that didn't exhibit some voids in the mold itself. Okay, I think that's more than enough, so I'm going to try it. Now, we have some time to work. As a matter of fact, this mold is going to take uh, approximately two days to dry. Uh, so if I don't get the quantity just right, I can pull this out and add just a little bit more, or I can even add to the sides. But my goal here is... That's as far as I can go. Depth-wise, I'm at my registration mark, so I, I'm just a little bit shy, and I am going to add. Now, for those of you that work with silicone a lot, know that you can always fix, repair, and add to your silicone if you have a void uh, or that sort of thing. Silicone sticks very well to silicone, surprisingly enough. Not surprisingly, actually. Just keep in mind, if you're not happy and you do want to add or repair your mold at first attempt, yes, you can always add more silicone on right on top of your silicone. Okay, just give it a little swoosh around here for me. Okay, this is plenty for me. I can see the edges of my master original. And that's as far as I'm going to go. That is very good right there. There you have it. Now, on the second part, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be use, make the outside. And as you can see, I've already um, made up my uh, little forms. Uh, this saves. I only need a certain thickness on my mold. Quarter inch all around is plenty for my purposes. On both uh, the inside and the outside. Once I finish with these molds, I will go come back and I will add registration marks for making the actual bioplastic pot. Once the mold is dry, it will be easier for me then. So there you have it, folks, um, a portable version of silicone to make finely detailed articles. Uh, this mold here, it's going to take um, um, maybe a couple of days to dry. I don't know exactly. I'm going to give it a couple of days before I attempt to uh, demold it. During that time, I'm going to make the outside. Now, um, I hope this is helpful to you, Kasika and uh, Mike. No salad bowls were harmed in the making of this video. This answers both questions. Yes, we can use something disposable. And uh, 
my wife is not going to be upset with my use of her salad bowls. <laughs> I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, join me again where uh, we are going to, once we make this mold, we're going to make some bioplastic pots with it. Please subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.